getting these laws implemented properly in the interest of the poor is another round of big, big struggle, that part of the world. Right? So, I am very happy that you, you are very deeply involved in Pakistan and it will be very interesting to see expansion of uh, BLLF work <laughs> into India as well in the coming years. Uh, the work of Ekta Parishad with which I work, uh, the focus is on two areas. Focus is on youth, focus is also on non-violence. Right. Young people acting non-violently. And the idea is nothing is going to change unless people stand up and make the change happen. No laws are going to change anything. Laws are good. No institution is going to change anything unless people stand up and say, look, these laws need to be implemented, these institutions need to function. In democracy, that is very important, that it is not only participating in an election, but also after the election, how the citizen will behave, how the citizen will engage with the state in order to make the state accountable, to make the state to, to deliver what it is promising. That's a big job in which we are involved. So we are focusing on youth, focusing on non-violence. We believe that young people have a lot of energy and this energy can be used for transforming the society. Where do you get the energy to transform the society? These young people of the world, so much of energy. At the moment, we allow this energy into supermarket and malls and tutor and uh, mobile phone and you know, uh, the, the energy is used. But energy is not used for transforming the world into a better place. How do we help young people to dream to transform their energy into a better world? That's one important area because the better world doesn't come on its own. It has to be created. It has to, we have to work for it. So that is one focus area. So what do we do? We train young people. We get very ordinary young people. And uh, we train them in a way that they get inspired to do something to change the situation. So the first part of the training program is more like confidence building because young people believe that I can't do anything. I can't change much. The maximum I can do is to look for a job for myself. Nothing more. Changing the world is my, not my job. So, young people to believe, look, we, we are really a force and we can do something to change the situation. So, much of the time in the training program goes in terms of building this confidence. I can be an agent for change. I can be the change agent. And then, they get time to analyze that poverty is God given to poverty is man made. And if poverty is man made, then we change it. So the general belief system that, oh, poverty I can't change because it is so difficult to change. From there, to believe that poverty is something which is man made, it, it is related to resource distribution, it is related to, to various other realities. So we can change it. If we want, we can change it. So we move from the confidence building position to understanding that poverty, exploitation, corruption, injustice, this all can be changed if I want. The third part is to understand the, the, the institutions and laws. What are the laws and institutions around us which are functioning, which are not functioning? How do I make it function? How do I make it happen? If there is a bonded labor release rehabilitation act and still there are bonded laborers at the bottom as slaves, how do I make this act operational so that it will impact the poor people? If there is a land reforms act, how do I see that rich people will part with their land and the land will come to the poor guy? So institutions and laws need to be activated in the interest of the poor. How do I do that? How do I interact with these institutions? There is a commission for women. There is a commission for children. 
There is a there is a commission for human rights. How do I make these institutions to function? And finally, with my confidence, with my analysis, I want to change everything. But how do I do it non-violently? The change need not be a kind of an inspiration for change. Should not make me violent. I want to change fast. So young people go through this process of training. It takes time. It is a kind of a training, then action, reflection. It takes time for young people to understand, look, I have the energy to change. I know the institutions with which I need to deal. And change is possible. And non-violently, change is possible. And we take young people to that level of understanding. And then these young people go to their villages, organize the community, because alone it is very difficult to change anything. So if, it, if you are organized as a community, easy to change the situation. So in many communities where the organizational work is complete, you will find change happening. Changes are because people are organized and we are together, we want to bring the change. So the teacher is not coming to the school, then the community can act in a way that the teacher will come to the school. The doctor is selling the medicine in the black market. <laughs> community is organized in a way that they will see that the medicine is going to the, the poor people and people who need medicine not in the black market. The land is not distributed. The people will see that they will build enough pressure to redistribute the land so that everybody has land to produce their food, etc. etc. So an organized, unorganized community cannot do much, but an organized community can change a lot in their life. So this young people moving into a village, organizing the community makes a lot of difference. But there's also backlash. When you organize the community, when you challenge corrupt officials, when you challenge the feudal system, when you ch challenge the, uh, the elected representatives who are not doing anything for their people, there will be backlash. So that is where the organization's role comes, Ekta Parishat's role comes that you, how do you help these young people to face these challenges? This challenge from the feudal elements, challenge from corrupt officials, challenge from corrupt politicians, how do you help these young people to move without getting frustrated, without getting disappointed? How do you help these young people to move on so that their confidence level is increasing day by day? And this is this confidence that helps us to organize this long march, hundreds of kilometers, thousands of people. Who are behind this? Behind this long march are those young people who came into a training program. And they learned things can change. And they went to the villages to organize community. And all these organized communities in different parts of India coming together makes 50,000, 100,000 people marching to Delhi to change policies. So we have learned through this process that young people can be a real agent of change. I mean, if you catch them at the right point, train them well, give them this confidence that they can change, they can not only change the situation at the bottom in the community, but they can also together take responsibility to change policies at the top. So this is what we call the micro-macro action with the energy of young people, very ordinary young people. But then, that is one part of important part of the process, how do you get the youth energy? And that is why we very often travel across the globe to see whether more young people can be involved in different parts of the world. But the second part is equally important, that uh, young people need to understand that we are fighting against violence. We are basically fighting violence. And fighting violence cannot be through violence. But how, do, how do you put down violence by fighting through violence? So, this understanding about violence and non-violence need to be very deep in the minds of young people, so that you don't make a mistake in your, in your interest to bring about change. So how do we take them? That is the second part of training. First of all, one need to understand when we say violence, there is direct violence and indirect violence. Direct violence is that we see every day. What is in Iraq, what is in Afghanistan, what is in Syria. We say this is violence. But 
we don't generally notice indirect violence. So much indirect violence. Poverty, corruption, injustice, marginalization, refugees, so much of violence around us. We don't classify them as violence. This is a problem. So if we understand in the society there is direct violence which we can see, indirect violence that we cannot see, and then understand indirect violence is breeding ground for direct violence. It's like bad water is breeding ground for mosquitoes. The dirty water is breeding ground for mosquitoes. Indirect violence is breeding ground for that. Please analyze the situation then we will understand that in many cases the violence that we see today can, could have been avoided. The kind of large violence we see in different parts of the world could have been avoided if the structural violence, the systemic violence, we were able to address them one time. <coughs> so young people understand, okay, it is important to deal with this indirect violence so that we will not give an opportunity for direct violence. Expression of violence is direct violence. Then one should also understand when we speak about non-violence, Non-violence can be passive and active. Many of us are non-violent. None of us are taking gun and shooting anybody. We are not beating anybody. But then we are passive non-violence actors. We drink coffee at home and speak about non-violence. Doesn't change anything in the world, isn't it? I mean, so passive non-violence is not going to make much of an impact. What is important is active non-violence. How do we how do we engage? So that indirect violence can be challenged. So young people learn this. Direct, indirect violence and passive, active non-violence. And using active non-violence to contain indirect violence. That's what we do. That's the first part of the training. But then they, they advance in their understanding of non-violence. They understand, okay, non-violence is not only for good times. So that's what happens always, you know. Non, when everything is good, we are all non-violent. <laughs> the moment thing has gone wrong, you start pulling your... <laughs> and you say, oh no, this man doesn't understand, I will have to deal with him. Right? So, we believe that non-violence is for good times, but test of non-violence is when the situation is bad. How do we behave when the situation is bad? That is where the test comes. So, young people need to understand that it is not only good that everything is good, everything is non-violent, but suddenly something went wrong and you became violent. And how many, how many struggles in the world are turning from non-violence to violence just because that particular situation they were not able to handle. They thought, now these people will not listen to us non-violently, so take to violence. So, understanding that the test of non-violence is when the situation is bad. How do you, that particular point of time in life, how do you handle that? Very important. And the third thing is for them to understand non-violence is not only between human beings. It's not for non-violence between human beings. If between uh, people, it should be non-violent. But non-violence also between people and nature. See, the kind of discussion we have today about global warming and climate change, what is it? This is a kind of violence that we committed on Mother Earth, to the nature. So the, in our discourse of non-violence, it is only country to country, Iraq, Afghanistan, etc., etc., America, Syria. We are not really speaking about the kind of violence that we are committing to Mother Earth. And the situation in which we are, the planet is in such a crisis. And that is our behavior and violent behavior to nature. And young people need to understand this, that it is also to our, our relationship with nature, non-violence, application of non-violence. So it goes on like that. And we also speak about, uh, it's not in one day, but in course of time they also understand, fire cannot be put down with fire. 